So there are two, uh, three types of plate boundaries or plate interactions. And today I'm going to be talking about divergent plate boundaries. And you can see from the arrows that if plates are divergent, they are spreading away from each other. In subsequent lectures, I'll cover convergent plate boundaries and transform plate boundaries. So we see here, we have a, a little graphic showing the three types of plate boundaries. And specifically, we're gonna be concentrating today on what's going on here at mid-ocean ridges, where we see the arrows that are moving in opposite directions, here and here. And then we also see something happening over here in continental crust, where we see uh, the arrows moving in opposite directions. So we can have seafloor spreading, but we can also get spreading taking place on land. And we'll look at some examples of both of these. So some terms to know when we're talking about divergent plate boundaries are spreading centers, convection currents, mid-ocean ridges, or MORs, and ophiolites, a particular type of rock sequence. So divergent plate boundaries. Plates are moving away from each other. Every mid-ocean ridge is a divergent plate boundary. So we're gonna look at a couple of places, one being the Red Sea and the other one um, being um, uh, the Gulf of California. But let's look at the Red Sea first. The Red Sea, there's a mid-ocean ridge at the bottom of the Red Sea and um, it's opening up. We can look at the Red Sea like an ancestral Atlantic Ocean. This is exactly how the Atlantic Ocean became the, the ocean that it is today. So as, why does this happen? It happens because magma is coming from the mantle. Magma is coming up, putting pressure on the ocean floor rocks, causing them to break. And then as the lava moves out, it causes the ocean floor to open up, to get wider, to get larger. And this is what you're looking at, this little GIF or GIF, whatever you call these things. Um, this is how it happens. So it's like a conveyor belt just creating um, more new ocean floor. And in this uh, picture of the globe, this image of the globe, we see the mid-ocean ridge. This is the mid-Atlantic ridge that runs down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And what we have, um, or I shouldn't say what we have, what you should remember is this ridge is continuous. It's the longest mountain range in the world. It trends through all, the, all of the world's oceans. So when we have plates that are moving away from each other, the force involved is called tension. Tensional forces cause things to be pulled apart. So when the lithosphere is being pulled apart, it's going to get thinner. It's like taking a piece of taffy and pulling it, and you see it getting thinner and thinner until it breaks apart. That's what happens to Earth's crust too. So when we have a continent that's being pulled apart, the crust is thin. That means that volcanic activity is likely because the magma is closer to the surface, or if no volcanoes, that magma can certainly heat groundwater, giving um, a result of hot springs and geysers, as well as the potential for geothermal energy to be harnessed as it uh, is in Iceland. So let's take a look at some geographic locations where there are divergent plate boundaries. The Red Sea is interesting because it gives us insight into how the Atlantic was formed, as I mentioned before. It's an ocean in the making due to mid-ocean ridge there that is producing lava. Remember, every mid-ocean ridge is a divergent plate boundary. So the Red Sea is up here. There's the Red Sea. So, you know, it's hard for us to jump in a submersible to view what's going on down there. I mean, after all, we aren't James Cameron, but we can see what those tensional forces at work, what they're doing on the adjacent land, on land that's nearby to, be, to, to feel those tensional forces at work. So what you're seeing here is the Great Rift Valley of Africa. It, 
trends for well over a thousand miles and it's being pulled apart. It's being pulled, all these red lines right here indicate fault lines. So we've got forces pulling this way. Let me grab the little pin here, uh, pin, and see if this works. So we have forces that are being, that are pulling this part, taking it that way, and this part is being pulled this way. So this is stretching, being stretched apart. So as a result, magma's closer to the surface. There are gonna be earthquakes. There are gonna be volcanoes. There are lots of volcanoes in the Rift Valley of Africa. There's lots of water in the Rift Valley of Africa because this is a low area. Water is able to fill in. Uh, also sediments uh, fill in the area. So one of the places that is in the Rift Valley of Africa is um, um, uh, Old Inigo, which is an area where some of the oldest fossils in uh, human fossils in the world, human ancestor fossils have been found. And the reason for that is because of uh, all the sediments that wash in. So anything that died was covered up and preserved in the form of, of fossils. Um, uh, Mary, or sorry, not Mary, but uh, Lucy, the fossil Lucy was found in uh, Old Inigo. Uh, this is what happens when you go live. It's not Old Inigo where the Lucy fossil has been found. It was Old Divide Gorge. Old Divide Gorge is in the Rift Valley of Africa, so I don't want to screw you up on that. Old Divide Gorge is where all that took place. Um, so what kind of things happen here? Well, I want to go back to this diagram to begin with. Uh, just so we know what, what's happening here. As uh, Harry has explained, you have new seafloor that is being formed. So as we move away from these mid-ocean ridges, the rocks are gonna get older and older. But the other thing that you see happening here are these little stair-step design, designs, uh, these little stair-step features right here. I can get this in the right place. There we go. Those are caused from the ocean floor breaking. Again, we see the divergent forces here. So tensional forces are at work. Uh, and those are called, when you have the a crust that breaks due to tensional forces, the type of fault that occurs is a normal fault. So normal faulting is quite normal at divergent plate boundaries. So let me just go into a little detail here because this will become important when we're talking about convergent uh, plate boundaries. I want to stress the importance of ophiolites. Ophiolites are a sequence of rocks. They are not a particular rock type. It's a sequence of rocks. Ophiolites can only form on the bottom of the ocean floor at these mid-ocean ridges. So the slide gives a view of where the magma forms in the mantle and it shows how it rises. And one of the things we've talked about is how the chemistry of magma will change as it rises toward the surface. As it rises up to the upper part of the mantle and then as it gets into the lithosphere, the chemistry is going to change from ultramathic in the mantle to mathic as it rises through the lithosphere. When that magma solidifies in these different regions, we're going to have different types of rocks that form. So on its way up, at some point, you know, um, if some of it will be molten, but some of it will solidify as it's making its way up to the ocean floor. So we get these different rock types. If it solidifies in the mantle, the rock type that we get is peridotite. That's an ultramathic rock. If it makes it up a little higher, and it solidifies, then the rock that forms is gabbro. And you see where the gabbro is forming right here. These are intrusive rocks. The peridotite is the ultramathic chemical comp comp uh, composition and the gabbro is mathic composition. And then the next thing that you see here are structures. 
not a rock type. They're structures. The structures are dikes, which are igneous intrusions. As the ocean crust is spreading, the crust will crack. Magma will enter into those cracks, and when it solidifies, we get this intrusive structure that's called a dike. The type of rock is diabase. We didn't talk about diabase, but it's intermediate between gabbro and diorite. And then at the very bottom of the ocean floor, when the magma flows onto the ocean floor as lava, it will solidify into these structures that we call pillow basalt. Um, the lava pours out on the ocean floor in these big bulbous masses. So the front part of it will chill down because it's in contact with the ocean water, but there's molten stuff still coming behind it. So it pushes it out in these big pillow structures. And we call those pillow basalt. So wherever we find pillow basalt present day, we know that it didn't form in place. It formed underwater. It could be under a lake, it could be under the ocean, but whatever, whatever the water body, it had to be underwater that it formed. So those aren't the only rocks that are forming though, because as this ocean floor forms, you know, you got critters that are living in the ocean water. So they live in the ocean water, they die, and then they float to the bottom of the ocean and end up settling out on the floor. And over time, they will become oozes. So we get these calcareous oozes if the critters are made out of calcite, and we get these siliceous oozes if the critters happen to be made from silica. And we talked about diatoms, we talked about radiolarians, we talked about coccolithophores, um, all of these different microscopic critters that live in the ocean. So if that calcareous ooze solidifies, we end up with limestone. If that siliceous ooze lithifies, we end up with chert, a very common rock here in California. So I'll have more to say about ophiolites. Again, this entire sequence is called an ophiolite sequence. And I just wanted to introduce you to this concept now because it becomes important when we get into convergent plate boundaries. Because how did these rocks end up on land? And there are many of them on land. They didn't form there. How did they get there? So this is the town of Goma. Goma is in the Central African Republic, and in 2002, there was a volcanic eruption from a nearby volcano called Narangongo that basically wiped out the town. There were about 400,000 people that had to be evacuated. Lava was pouring through the town six feet deep. Everything was encapsulated in the, in the lava. And then it solidified, which you know brought an, a whole nother uh, facet to the problems that were uh, that were taking place. There were 245 people that died in this eruption. Some of them because of buildings collapsing due to lava flows and due to earthquakes. But remember the poison gases. This is one of those notorious volcanoes uh, that has um, carbon dioxide associated with it. So a lot of people were as asphyxiated by carbon dioxide too. This is an ongoing threat to the area. It has erupted more recently too with more people dying, but that is life in the Rift Valley of Africa. And then this is old and Inyo volcano also in the Rift Valley. Uh, you see ash blowing from the volcano. This is um, in safari land where people pay big bucks to go to see the uh, the big animals that are roaming these grasslands. And sometimes those animals get suffocated because the amount of ash that's blowing out of this volcano is enough to, um, to overcome them. And then this is Victoria Falls, one of the most famous waterfalls in the world. And what you're looking at is another stretch mark. I call these the stretch marks of Earth because they're forming as a result of Mother Earth giving birth to new land, really. This is lava, sorry, magma that's coming up un from underground 
putting pressure on the, the lithosphere and causing it to break apart. And for this particular scenario right here, uh, there happens to be water that's flowing over one of those cracks and it gives us this beautiful Victoria Falls. And this is a view of the Rift Valley of Africa. You see in the middle, there's water that's hanging out. There's water that's collecting because this area is saggy. It's being stretched. It's lower. And then on either side, there that's faulting that's taking place. So that's normal faulting that's taking place as a result of this whole area being placed under tension. And then over here, uh, let me get my pen again. Sorry about that. Let's get the laser pointer over here. What you're looking at are volcanoes. These are all volcanoes. So that's the typical topography of a rift valley. If you went down to the bottom of the, uh, to the ocean at one of these mid-ocean ridges, take away the grass and it would look very similar to what you're looking at here. Then let's go to Iceland. Iceland is an island. In fact, that's what Iceland means. It's an island sitting right on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. For some reason, there's way more lava pouring out at this location, and it's built up from the bottom of the ocean floor to build this island. And then the island itself has volcanoes on it that are close to a mile high. So that's a heck of a lot of lava that's pouring out of the ground. But it's an island that's splitting itself apart because of the mid-ocean ridge here that basically runs down the middle of, I of Iceland. Um, at some point in time, the, this is going to break apart. These two parts are gonna, of the island are going to break away from each other, and you're going to have an, an eastern island. Oh, wait a minute. This would be east over here, an eastern part of Iceland and a western part of Iceland with an ocean between them. This is Thingvellir Valley. This is one of the big tourist attractions if you go to Iceland. You can put one foot on, well, you'd have to stretch your legs pretty far apart, but, uh, but you're, you can walk down into this rift valley. There's water that collects here. You can dive in here and you can put one hand on the North American plate, which is over here, and the other hand on the Eurasian plate, which is here. So this is the Rift Valley of Africa. Look at how similar it looks to the Rift Valley of, of Africa. Did I say the Rift Valley of Africa? That's the Rift Valley of Iceland. Looks very similar to the Rift Valley of Africa. Um, water collecting in the middle. Here are those faults. Look at these stretch marks over here. So that's happening as a result of the, the pressure that lava is putting uh, on the lithosphere. And Iceland is pulling apart at about a rate of an inch a year, which is the same rate that the mid-ocean ridge is spreading. These buildings right here are old Viking buildings, so they've been here for about a thousand years. At some point, they're going to be underwater. These are more stretch marks with water collecting in the low areas. That's one of those volcanic mountains in the background. More stretch marks, more water collecting. That, that is in Thingvellir Valley, where the mid-ocean ridge makes itself known at the surface. And what are you going to have here? Well, we know we have volcanoes, but we have groundwater that's being heated, so we have hot springs. Iceland is full of hot springs and it's full of geysers. This one is a hot spring, but it's actually also a geyser and it erupts every eight minutes. Um, and sometimes it erupts twice, so there will be this big eruption of water and then almost immediately after it will erupt again. I, I used to have video, I don't know what happened to my video, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work anymore, so I just have a still picture. And then this is, um, these are fumaroles, this is just volcanic gases that are coming up out of the ground from fissures and cracks in the ground. Then a little bit closer to home, we have the Gulf of California. The Gulf of California is, there's a mid-ocean ridge underneath. 
uh, and the Gulf of California has formed. It, um, volcanic activity started in Mexico. That peninsula used to be over here, part of mainland Mexico. The volcanic activity started uh, just like in the Red Sea, just like in the Rift Valley of Africa, caused it to, to split apart. So now we have this weird appendage attached to California. It's really part of Mexico, but it's called Baja California. Uh, and that stretching that's taking place here is being felt in parts of the Western US, over in this area that we call the Great Basin, the Basin and Range. So if you notice, this whole area has this crinkled look to it. I'm going to change this to a pen, if it'll let me. So what's happening is it has that crinkled look to it because it's stretching and we're getting normal faulting that's taking place. In a normal fault, we have what's called a we have what's called a, um, a hanging wall and a foot wall. Sorry, I was having a, a brain fart there for a second. A hanging wall and a foot wall. Um, the hanging wall is the drop down part. The hanging wall is the basin. The foot wall is the range. So that's how this place gets its name, basin and range, basin and range, because it's just a series. If you've ever driven across Nevada, you know that you're going, up a mountain, down a mountain, into a valley. Up a mountain, down a mountain, into a valley. Up a mountain, down a mountain, into a valley. That's basin and range. Nevada, actually, if it looks like it's been stretched, stretched apart like an accordion. If you could put it back together and get rid of those basins and ranges and put it all, mush it all back together again, Nevada would be about 100 miles shorter than it is today. So that's divergence, and as you would expect, you're going to have hot springs over here. You have, it used to be way more volcanic than it is today. Uh, it's calmed down from that, but we still have magma close to the surface because Nevada has some of the thinnest crust in the world. So we got magma close to the surface, so it's heating groundwater. We have hot springs. Um, I don't know if they're in geysers in Nevada or not. The, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to say they're absolutely are not because somebody will probably come up and find one. Um, but geothermal energy. Uh, Nevada has about 19 geothermal power plants. So that's good. As Iceland, the, Iceland totally, the, all of their electricity is produced from geothermal energy. They don't have to burn fossil fuels to get electricity. Um, so Nevada is pretty good about that too. So that's divergence a little bit closer to home. And if you want more close at home, if that's, that's not correct grammar, but um, Death Valley. Death Valley is one of those basins that has dropped down and it's surrounded by the mountains. So under tensional forces. Um, Basin and Range is also in Modoc County, part of Modoc County in the extreme northeastern part of California is part of the Basin Range. And if any of you know where Susanville is, uh, Susanville is also in the Basin and Range. So it's being stretched apart. Uh, and over time, you know, that might be where the new ocean is. We always think of the San Andreas Fault breaking away, and that might be where the new ocean is but there's a better bet that it will be in this area through here because it's so weak. The area is so weak. And that is a huge, uh, I won't say huge, but it's a very important seismic belt. A lot of earthquakes occur over here. So it makes sense that maybe if we get a new plate boundary, uh, it will stem from what's happening in here and make itself known in this region here. All right, so that's it for divergent plate boundaries. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, if you all have questions about anything, um, if I make mistakes in the lecture, it's really hard in this format that I'm using to go in and edit and get rid of those mistakes. So I'm just going to have to live with the mistakes. Um, and, but if you all catch me in anything, please let me know. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.